Welcome to Vision Screencast. This is the Easy Publish version 4.4 Administration Overview. Before we're able to get into the Administration Overview, you're going to be faced with this type of screen. Now, Easy Publish has a front end and a back end. You'll probably recognize the back end. Um, you've got training or whatever the name of your site is, forward slash site admin, or you're likely to have admin dot and then the site name. If you're logged into the front end, then you're going to have this kind of um, easy power bar at the front here. But we're not going to go through the um, the front end. What we're going to do is have a quick whip through all of the kind of major administration features that Easy Publish has, so you can get an overview. The first thing we're going to do is log in with our user account, and then what we're faced with is we're faced with the dashboard. Now the dashboard is meant to be the kind of center of your easy publish world and it has a lot of the information and the things that you're working on are clear and to the hand. You have on the top here, you have my pending items, my drafts, so you can tell that I'm working on a document for the conference awards. And you also have over here some information about your system. So you'll know what version of easy publish you're running. In this case, it's version 4.40. And it's also saying whether you're running Easy Publish Premium or not. And the latest content that you've actually edited on the site. And this is quite handy because you could have a large site and you're trying to hunt through for where was that article I edited um, a week ago or two weeks ago. This will have a complete list of all of the items that you've actually worked on. So let's go through and have a look at the items within the tab here. We've got change password. So as with, um, say, a front-end user or an ordinary site, you can change your password. You'd enter your old password here and the new password. We've got some collaboration, and this will be where your workflow items will be. And we'll have a future training session on, um, on workflows. We've got the dashboard, so if you ever want to get back to it, here it is. You can then edit your profile to actually change your details, maybe your name, maybe your password again, or your email address and signature. So you can see all of that information is easily at hand. Let's discard that draft and leave that out. We also have, oh, let's go back to the dashboard. We also have my bookmarks, so we can get an understanding of where my book sites are. Now, bookmarks are in two places. They're either here, where you list them within your dashboard, or they're nice handily in this nice tab on the right hand side. So I've got several bookmarks in here and if I wanted to remove one I could or if I wanted to add one I could as well. Um, while we're talking about the right hand tab it's got some information in it as well such as change information and you can hide it if it's in the way if your screen space is at a, a minimum you can hide it and then you can share it again. We have um, my drafts that do again a list of all the drafts and this way you can actually list them in 10, 25 or 50 and your notification settings. And this is when do you want to be told about things that are actually changing on the site. As you can see, down the bottom here, I have um, an update. I want to know any update for files that are added into the conference location or within images. So I can just keep, an, keep a gentle eye on what's happening within the site. And I can find out whether they're daily, weekly, or monthly. And also I can choose to have notifications from workflow emailed to me as well and pending items is again tied into workflow and there's an also a small site structure down the bottom here so that's the dashboard the content structure tab contains all of your files so if you want to find a file or a folder or an article that you're working on it's more than likely going to be in here as you can see the screen is split up into three areas it's um, the left hand side here you have your um, file structure and this is very similar to your desktop so if you had a desktop and folders within there or on the server then it's exactly the same format and follows a cascading style so if I close and open and then I can have a look in conference and that will take me to the page now when I'm in the page I'm in the second area and the second area gives me information about the particular um, folder article that I'm looking at so I can have a look at the actual view um, and it's, if this contained any information that was visible, it would be displayed on there. It contains the details, which gives you the creator when it's created, the versions, any translations. And it gives you an understanding of how many times has this been updated.
It also gives you locations, so it gives you an understanding of where it is within the system and how many sub-items it has. It also gives you any related objects, so it has any images within it. And for the folders, it also gives you the information about publishing order. So within Easy Publish, you can publish in various orders. You can have published order, um, which will actually descend and will actually give you the information um, listed, um, the last one you changed first. Or you can actually have ordered by name, which would then have the, you could have alphabetic or reverse alphabetic. And that's quite useful if you want to com complete a list of articles and you want them sorted by name. And that's how your end user is going to be using them. And you can also have priority as well, which enables you to be able to set the order of a particular page yourself without having the system do it. So that's the second area. Now, the third area of the screen is down the bottom here. And in the third area, you will notice that this is where you have any items that are listed below your folder. So if you have a look, we've got the conference 2009. You also then have below that all of the articles within there. And you can then go into these articles. You can see where they're published. You can see if they're visible. And you can also have a look and find out what you may want to do with those. You can edit, preview, copy, etc. And we'll go through all of these in future um, screencasts. But what we want to do first of all is we just want to click on this one just to open it up. So here we go. If we then click on view, we'll notice that this has got some more meaningful information than conference. So it's got a picture. It's got the conference information. It has um, the copy within there. Any links are highlighted in there as well. And then we have if there are any um, comments allowed. And down the bottom here as well, we've got managed versions. So if we wanted to know when something was changed or updated, we can click on that. So if we just quickly clicked on edit, we'd then be able to go in. Uh, it looks like I've opened that one before. So I've gone into here and I've been able to edit it. So I've got conference, say for Berlin, for training. I've then got the author and all the other information. And again, this is the editing of Easy Publish will go through in a future future cast. So I'm going to um, store that draft and exit. Also it gives us, if we then go into the conference again, you'll notice that this item has two locations and that's because I've added an additional location under knowledge. This means it will be listed under conference and it will also be listed under knowledge as well. And on the right hand side you can set the main location. Now again as with every screen, you've got this tab on the right hand side where we can add bookmarks or change items. And then I can close that down should I want the entire screen. If I go back to conference again, within the, um, the content area, I can then, if I want to select all items or some items, and I want to remove them or move them, I've got the option to do so. And that's the content structure. The media library is the main location within Easy Publish for all of your images and files and flash and um, videos should you want them. In fact, it's very, very, very similar to the content structure in as much that on the left hand side you'll have your main folder structure, your way of organizing your files. On the right hand side you'll have the information where you can view those files. So if I, in the same way as content structure, wanted to click on images, I can then go through and see the information about the folder and container and then I can see the list of the actual images below there. If I find within this area this information is too much I'll just click on that and shrink it down and if I'm not really caring about editing or viewing the information I'll normally shrink that down, it saves a lot of space. So then I can look at my image itself, increase this out have a look at the view and then I can get a good picture of the image. So within Easy Publish, this is the kind of shared space where you'd want to put all of your files. So all of your information that you're storing in PDF, Word document, Excel, PowerPoints, etc. You then store your images and then with images, this is where you'd store your JPEGs. It's where you'd store your, um, your PNGs and any other image data. And where you'd store your multimedia as well, so any videos, um, any any kind of large storage or something that has both sound and movement in it at the same time, you'd probably want to put into there. And you can create multiple folders below here. You don't have to stick to these. I would definitely leave these three in and don't touch them. But there's you can have multiple areas within those and if you want to set permissions. 
and that's the media library. The user accounts tab is the tab that we use to store all of our users within the system. So within here we're going to store everybody who's an editor, um, who needs to be able to edit content, everybody who's an administrator, and also anybody who's signed up to the site anonymously or signed up to the site as a member. When I talk about signed up to a site anonymously, anybody who comes and visits your Easy Publish site actually gets um, assigned a kind of anonymous user. It's how Easy Publish tracks them throughout the site and has an understanding of what they need to do. So you're going to have anonymous users, you're going to have members, and this is someone who's actually registered on the site, and you're also going to have administrator users. So, and again, just like Media Library and Content Structure, Easy Publish treats users exactly the same. So the skills that you learn within Content Structure and Media Library can be used here as well. The same information along the top here, except we've got a couple of extra tabs about roles and policies. Roles, what can they, you know, what roles they live in. What, um, so an administrator can basically do everything, but you may have an editor who could be a sub-editor and a publishing editor. So you can set your roles up, and then you've got your policies. So what can this person do? And you'll notice for the administrator, it's pretty simple basically is everything. However, for an editor, if we have a look at their roles and policies, you'll notice that for policies, you can break it down into a whole heap of information. So you're saying that you can say only read certain sections, um, whether they can use easy flow, the layout mechanism, whether they can look at content differentials between different types of um, so if you've got an article, you'd be able to see what's changed between versions. So it's really, really granular, which can give you a lot of control. And then you look at the, um, the roles as well. So this has the role of a member and an editor. The reason why you need the member in there is because it needs to log into the site. And again, we'll cover that in a future screencast. So as we can see, if we go to the administrators, we have our user down the bottom here. And if we want to see who that user is, we can just click on it. Then we can view or we can click edit. And then just as the user profile edit, we can go in and change it. Which means if you have users in your system, you can go in and change their password. You can go in and change their email, their signature, and you can really support them. And it also means you don't have to know their password to be able to help them. Now, there's also some other information on the, on the left-hand side here, which gives you when it was last modified, how many published versions, and also if there are any translations as well. So let's discard that draft and go back so it's nice and clean. And that is the user accounts. So we've been able to touch on just a few of the features within the administration o um, overview. Now, you can get a feel for the amount of power and the amount of functionality within Easy Publish. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and explore some of these areas in other topics. So we'll go through and we'll explore content structure in more depth, editing an article, draft control, media library, user accounts. So we can get a little bit more in depth. We've only been able to have a look at some of the features here, but I hope it's given you a good overview. Um, and if you're already an editor, you'll, you already know and love the system already. And if you're a new user, it'll give you an insight into the true power that you can get within Easy Publish. So thank you very much for watching this screencast, and I hope you found it useful. Bye-bye now.